we look phenomenal though. How did you know people were coming in? Because up in the top left corner of the stream yard screen. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we are definitely okay. live. Hello, whoever came in. Hey guys, you got to give stream yard permission or we can't see who's commenting. So if you could do that, that'd be awesome. Then and we she... know who we're talking to. Uh, Trish is referring to if you're watching us on Facebook. So, so whoever said hello to us right now, it just says Facebook user. So, see, <laughs> hello, ladies. Thanks for saying hi, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've got four people joining us over on YouTube. Oh, hey, Sherry. Yeah, and hey, Sherry. Sherry says she's from Indiana. Glad you could join us. Yes. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Melanie. From the YouTubes, as Jules says. <laughs> she cracks me up with that. I the know. YouTube. I know. Friends, we'll wait a couple more minutes and uh, see who else will join here. Hey, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Wow. Lots yeah, of people. On Facebook. Yeah. And Rose. Hey, Robin. Yeah. And there's our friend Debbie. Hey, Debbie. On Facebook. <clears throat> this is so fun. You can see everybody's comments. Oh, Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so Love fun. It. So fun to have you all here with us tonight. Um, we are going to start some beating tonight. So if you have, as you can see below Trish, that's the small wisdom uh, warrior. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the big one's right there. Like, <laughs> coming there. out of her head. <laughs> so if you have that one, grab it. If not, you can do what we're doing on uh, the, re the original Jewel Loom. So both are... Yeah, uh, I see another Facebook user saying hi. So don't forget if you're on Facebook... Um, give StreamYard permission to use your information so we can respond to your messages. But hello, Facebook user and Joan. <laughs> Hi, Joan. <clears throat> hey, buddy. <laughs> it's so fun. Oh, Marcy Roy, welcome. Nancy. Hello, Nancy. So fun. Well, Trish, uh, looks like, whoa, we're getting more. Hey, Yolanda, welcome, welcome. Happy New Year's to you, too. And oh, Nicole is here. For yay! <laughs> so fun, Nicole. Well, Trish, do you want to start out and introduce yourself? Uh, can everybody hear okay, us well, okay? Just... <clears throat> yep, sure, I can do that. Um, my name is Trisha Geison. Um, I own Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio here in Montgomery, Pennsylvania. Um, I have been a beater for a jewelry maker beater for about 15 years. Um, I have my studio out of my home. And what else? I have, I married my high school sweetheart, just to tell you a little bit about myself. Mm -hmm. And we have two beautiful standard poodles, hence the name Pink Poodle and Jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, um, just been keeping busy doing lives. I have my own YouTube channel. I have TikTok. I do some stuff over there. You know, the regular lineup there. But And I also have an Etsy shop. I think that about sums it up. <laughs> how, how long have you been uh, looming? Jewel looming. <laughs> I don't know. What the Jewel word. looming um, has actually uh, been probably, what, in the last year or so mm -hmm. that I picked that up. Because... Yeah. I was never one to, you know, do a loom. I was always wire work, wire work. You know, that's my first love. But I'm finding out that the jewel loom is like right up there with it because it's a different kind of jewelry making. You know, mm -hmm. it's a relaxing, it's a process, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and Amber is the one that you can thank for getting me <laughs> or I can thank. She is uh, the OG on the looming. So she, she introduced me to it, and now there's no turning back. <laughs> uh, and you're fine. Um, 
your name is coming up. So the StreamYard mention is just, uh, I think it's just in the, the, the looming group. So if you're, I don't know if you're on the Facebook page, if you're on Jules's Facebook page, then I think you're okay, but your name's coming up. So you don't have to worry. Uh, we are just mentioning it for those whose names weren't coming up. Uh, hey, Carmen and Joan. Actually, Trish and I were here early, but we didn't hit go live. <laughs> you could have come and hung out with us. <laughs> you could have, most definitely. We'll have to do that sometime. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Joan. She posted it for us there. Oh, awesome. Thank you. She's awesome. <clears throat> we're going to have to have Joan as a guest at one point. I just feel that in my bones. I, I totally agree. Joan is going to have to join us. Um, oh, I'm so glad. Now, Ian. Amber, tell us a little bit about you now. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, Catherine, welcome. Um, I have been, I've always been a maker. My mom was a maker and would sell at craft shows. And uh, I was always making things. Um, yeah, Joan, that would be awesome. <clears throat> yeah, we can do that. Um, anyways, <laughs> Joan's saying she's going to uh, pin up things for us here. Uh, anyways, um, and so I've had Mount Nittany Creations. So the name came from I live on Mount Nittany in central Pennsylvania, right next to Penn State University, who are the Nittany Lions. So and I've had my shop over five years now but I've been seriously beating jewelry making six years, um, but I've always done little things like that. <clears throat> so Trish and I met three, four years ago at Bead Fest in the Philly area and got hooked up that way and have been <laughs> beating and crazy together since. And uh, it's been over a year that I've been doing jewel loom stuff in the sense of learning and getting my first loom. And if you knew how many looms I own now, <laughs> yeah, we won't go yeah, there. Like but said, she's OG on that. She knows your business. Believe me. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so we're super excited. Um, as you can see below, uh, below Trish and I, you can see that, um, that is the loom we're going to be working with tonight. But, uh, we also, you can also use, um, here's mine. <laughs> Let's see, I will highlight me here. I'm going to go over the kit with you. But uh, this is the Small Wisdom Warrior. And um, Joan put on Facebook, she put uh, the link up for you guys. It is also in the description on YouTube. So this is... I've just got to get used to how to <laughs> do this here. Uh, this is a small wisdom warrior we're going to be, but you can also do the original jewel loom. And what we're going to be starting tonight, uh, we won't be finishing our project, but we will be starting with, this is the earth tone beads in a bag. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. So very excited. So you would get, when you order it, you'd get this pretty, gold bag from Jules, and you would get a bag here of 80 seed beads. They're kind of like a tannish brown color. And then a sparkly set of 11 O's. And then this beautiful, I'll dump this out for you guys so you can see, bead mix. I mean, it's just all this amazing, amazing yumminess. There's that these, glass in there. yep. oh yeah, beautiful feather <clears throat> charms and different colored glass pieces, all kinds of really fun earth tony uh, beads. So just really beautiful. So over the next month or so, we will be uh, working with you guys on this kit um this week and the um, uh we will be doing this and the last week of the month um and next we'll week yeah 
And then next week we will be showing you something new that uh, Jules is starting um, with patterns, with seed bead patterns. It is a really beautiful beads in a bag. So this is the one we will be working with this month. Super excited to share and you get a fun button too. So yeah, so I'm going to go over to Trish, Trish wrong one. <laughs> go over to Trish wow. here. Okay. And she is going to um, show you how to warp. Well, first, I just want to say to Nicole, you ask a question. Do you both live close to each other? Yes, we do. We're about an hour and 15 minutes apart. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. And Lizzie, I see that you made a comment that says broke my jewel loom, cracked it. Let Jules know that that happened and she can work with you to, to resolve that. Okay. Okay, guys. So we're going to work this beautiful girl. So I'm just using some hemp cord by Hemptique. That's usually our go-to. But um, this is 0.5, I believe. Is that right, Amber? 0.5 instead of I've, the... Or, yes, yeah. it's a smaller size, yeah. Yes, yeah. So it's our 0.5, and I probably should have started this before I, <laughs> before I uh, got on here. But we'll, we'll get it to work. We'll make it work here. See where the end is. I'm sure everybody deals with this at one point or another. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's an end stuck in there. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, Wasn't Kath as painful as I thought it would be. <laughs> Catherine, to answer okay. your question, sorry, there, you, uh, it, uh, Joan just posted the link to the beats in the bag for the earth tone and I believe it's nineteen ninety nine. Um, that's okay. You're new. No worries. <clears throat> yeah, we also have. Let's see. Let me check this real quick, guys. And I'll be right back with you. I thought we had a link here too that we could post up on the screen. Uh, it is in the description too, but Joan just it's posted. In the Okay. Yeah. It's in the YouTube oh, okay. description. So Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, you, Mrs. Um, I'm not very savvy as far as the computer goes. As well as as savvy as as my earbud just fell out. There we go. You still there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So <laughs> we're gonna get started here before I turn the whole thing into a huge mess. Um <laughs> We're going to use this 0.5 hemp that I'm just using it in this beautiful brown color. And you can see here on the Wisdom Warrior that they, they it has knobs on either end. Okay. And it has the nice fine teeth, just like the original. But I, I prefer these, but I like both. You know, you can do, you can do either. But um, so basically I'm going to start by tying my hemp onto <clears throat> one of the knobs and usually what I'll do and I tie this pretty snug I at least do a double knot with it because then I know it's really on there okay and see I've had that on and I left myself a little bit here guys to tie that it just makes it a lot easier if you're not trying to use a really short piece to tie on your your um so basically, since we're using the eight O's, we're going to be leaving one space between each. Now, how I do it, and I'm kind of a fly by the seat of my pants type of beater. Um, I am not, you know, so much just strict and everything has to be exact. That's on me. But anyway, what I do is I just find one of these notches up here on the far left side from the left side. Because we're going to do seven, seven, um, Warps. I'm going to start here in this first one. And as I go across here, guys, you get this in the camera a little better here. I go across here, guys. And I'm just, and this is where I say I'm a fly by the seat of the pants. I'm not counting over to make sure that I have exactly the amount of notches over here as I do over here. As long as it's very close, pretty close, it, it's fine. 
so that's just your starting one. Okay. So once you do that, then you can see here I brought it around the bottom knob and I'm keeping that tension on that with my thumb. The whole time you're warping, you want to make sure you're keeping the tension. That is what your key is going to be to a good warp. And especially on uh, the Wisdom Warrior, um, as compared to the original loom, it has it doesn't have a bar like the original does, which offers you a little bit more tension. But you know, it's preference, it's preference, but so keep your your um hand tight. And as you can see here, hopefully you can. Um, I'm leaving one space in between that, like I said, for the um, eight L's to go in there. So I'm going to go across here, and again, I'm keeping this tension as I'm going across here, guys, nice and tight. And I'm going to skip one up here at the top and put my uh, hemp into it. And again, I'm coming down here to the back, and I'm wrapping, keeping that keeping that nice and snug and I'm wrapping around that knob again. And if you feel like you want to make sure everything's a little tightened up, you can go around a couple times. I don't usually do that, but you know, I've been doing it for a while. If you feel more comfortable and you need to go around a couple times just to make sure that's snug, go for it. Okay. So let's see, am I off the screen? It's a little difficult to do this to fit the whole thing in at one time, but so I'm finding another one of those notches. On that end that we just brought it around the knob and i'm taking that straight across keeping that tension keep that tension okay same thing i'm going to skip a notch and put my uh, hemp into it again i'm going to go around the bottom the knob there again keeping tension guys i don't know if i can say this enough but <laughs> It's very important to keep your tension. And then we're going to look here and we're going to skip one. I believe we're going to do seven, right? Seven, I did say that, right? Okay. Yes, you said seven. Okay. All right. And we're just going to continue that process till we get our seven works and don't be afraid guys if you're doing this sorry i'm kind of off the screen there but if you're doing this and you can tell like right out of the gate most of the time at least i personally can if it's not taught you don't be afraid to take it loose and start over because the work is a huge part of how well your bracelet's going to come out Okay. I'll even bring in my other hand sometimes just to make sure I have that tension. And I'm popping into another line here. <clears throat> just making sure I'm getting all my eyes on is what they should be. So I have to pop my head in there sometimes. <laughs> all right. Same thing on this side. And that's a good idea there too, guys. If you have problems with your hand strength or anything, if you need to switch, you can certainly do that. Switch hands, you know. Because sometimes I know when I'm warping and I'm trying to keep the tension, um, sometimes my hands get a little sore. So that's a way to, to do that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So that means if we have seven. We've done seven warps. We're going to have six beads that we're going to put in there. Okay. And that goes for everything with all of it. You know, when you do warps, always, if you went six beads across, always do seven, you know. So you're doing that extra warp. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just wrapping this around a couple times and still keeping it taut. Okay. And as I'm keeping that taut, I'm going to bring in my cord cutters and I'm going to cut myself, leaving myself probably about three or four inches there so I can tie this off without having too much problem doing it. So I went around that twice 
what you're going to do is, and I'll hold this here to keep that tautness on there. And everybody's going to have their own technique, but you know, this seems to work for me anyway. So, and I'm just feeding the uh, the uh, end of that hemp through the underneath the work, I should say. Okay. And once I get that through, I'm going to grab that with my other. Finger. Yes, I am. I promise I am. Hey, Trisha, can you move up a little? It's a little dark where you are. Um, hey, okay. there we go. So once you get that through there, if you can see that guy, as I have that behind, then I just bring it across the top and put it up through the bottom of that loop that we made. You're just basically tying this off so everything stays as tight as it should be, okay? So I've got that across and I'm just gonna pull down here, tighten that down, okay? And I'm gonna do that one more time. Sorry, I'm bouncing around, guys. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna go around again, just for stability. And push that up through there. You can see that. Sometimes my hands don't do what I tell it to do. And we're just going to put those. That strand behind there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. I promise. Eventually. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I got that through again, and I'm just going to bring it around and put it through the bottom of my loop. You can see how I'm keeping this thumb here. Still, at this point, um, I'm one of those people, and I still want to keep my attention. It just seems like it works better for me that way. So there we go. So I'm going to pull that tight. Sometimes I even put, bring my pliers in and just give it a nice little tug. And there you have it, guys. There's your work for your BP bag kit there. And you can see it's nice and hot. Don't play like a guitar, you know you did it right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great, Trish. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. I learned from the best. You and you. <laughs> All right. So let me flip. I have to do a little more finagling. Uh, oh, you in the comments. Oh, no, that's us. Oh, that's you. <laughs> oh, dang it. Sorry. <laughs> only you. It's only me. All right. So Trish showed you how to warp. And the camera, you have to go the opposite of what you think. So <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's a little bit confusing, especially for, for me. Um, <laughs> so to use the kit, you're going to get out some jewel loom needles. <clears throat> And if you buy this loom or even the regular jewel loom, um, you're, you will get needles with them. So, and tonight we're going to use the Eidos for our base. So, And then one of my favorite to use is Wildfire. Ah, oh, yeah, I could do that. Thank you. Hold on. There. I, my face out of I was trying to do it. She knew what I was trying to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to try. That's what I was taught. You always try. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you, Joan. Joan made a comment that when she was warping this afternoon, if your warp material is thin enough, um, which the 0.5 hemp should be, um, you can push it down into the grooves. Of And the grooves are very similar. Uh, everything about this loom, it's the same size. Um, the grooves, 
are similar to the original jewel loom. The big difference is, is you don't have the tension rod. Um, instead, you have the little knobs. Um, I actually prefer, Marie asked a great question over on YouTube. Uh, do you have a preference to use this loom or the jewel loom? I actually prefer this one. A um, couple reasons. Um, it is harder to warp, um, as uh, I believe Nicole mentioned. It takes her several tries. It has taken me several tries to get it to warp well. Um, Trish, you did an awesome job there. Um, so that's the biggest difference because with the, the original, you take out the tension rod and you have it's taut for you. Uh, so you have to work a little harder to make sure that it's uh, tent, you know, that you have tension. But it is just so pretty to look at. Um, I love like the feel of the wood. I love the artwork that Jules had put on it. Uh, so it's so fun to loom on it because it's just so beautiful. <laughs> and so it makes the product so beautiful. Um, so that was a really great question, um, Marie. So, so we got our needle and I showed you, I prefer wildfire. So tonight, and that you can find um, on Beetleon or I believe there's some on Jules web, um, web page as well. I just like the way it feels. Uh, everybody has a different preference. This is this is my favorite. So um, I usually pull out about uh, two wing spans. So from fingertip to fingertip with my arms stretched out, um, I do two wing spans, two arm spans of wildfire. Now, if this is your first time, you might not want to do two wing spans. I would recommend maybe doing one. So, so I've pulled out two. Okay. And then I have these beautiful cutters. Oh, love these things. Um, Zoran cutters. Amazing. So you'll need cutters and you'll also need pliers for your project because a little hint when using wildfire or a fire line or anything is you take, um, your you just need needle nose, any regular pliers, fine. And you squeeze the end. So I don't know if you can, if I can get it to focus on that. But what you do is you flatten the end. And what that does, as long as it's a new jewel needle, I don't know about you, but I use my needles <laughs> until they're like yeah. falling apart. But oh, if it's a new yeah. needle, it should go right in. So a great way hold the thread. So see how I only have a tiny little bit sticking out. So that allows the thread to be tighter, um, to be stiffer. That's what I mean. And you push, and now I can't, do, I just did it. It pushed in through the hole. So that flatten just helps just enough to be able to thread your needle. So I always start out, I like to have her my girl facing me. It's backwards for you guys, but facing me. <laughs> so I like to come under the first warp. Uh, here's another difference between the original. I don't know why I didn't start with the other end. Silly me. Should have started with the other end. <laughs> I'm just going to tie a knot. But another difference uh, between the original um, that's okay, Catherine. There will be a replay. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, is that uh, the distance where you start on this loom versus where you start on the original is different because there's less here. So I always find I have to remember when I weave on this loom to start down a little further so you have extra um, to finish your piece. Okay. So I am going to tie a little knot here on the first warp. And then, so we did seven across. So that gives us six 
holes to put beads in. So I'm going to just go and pick up six seed beads. One, I don't need to count out loud, probably two. <laughs> Another great thing about a new needle, <laughs> it's very straight and easy to pick up beads. <laughs> you, you should see how some of my beads turn out. So everybody does this a little different. I like to lay it under the warp and line all the beads up like that and hold, make sure my hand is not in the middle of the thread and hold the beads up in their place. I don't, some people pull the thread all the way through the beads first and then do this, either way is fine. You do what, what works for you. And then we, then I just hold them in place between my pointer and my thumb as I'm pulling, pulling that through. So now you need to hold them here because we only have one side done and make sure you're underneath the warp. Now, it's important to push the beads through and we're going to go, you need to make sure you're going over top of the warp through every seed bead. So you can see, you should be able to see the, ah, moved my hemp there, the needle on top of the hemp. And that way, you know, it's going over the top. And the first row is always the hardest. It's always the most difficult. So I'll pause there. I don't know if you can see the, the silver of my needle over top of all of the warps. That's important because if you miss that, your beads are just going to fall right out. So then I like to hold my beads, grab my needle, and pull back through. Are there any questions, Trish, I'm, that I'm missing or is Joan catching them all? Joan, thank you so much. You, you rock. Thank you for your help. Yes, she does. I'm not seeing any questions. I did see Catherine say that she does have to go and she will walk to her and clean. Of course, Joan is just taking care of her. She always does. She's, a, she's awesome. Awesome. So I just picked up six more seed beads. And once again, the same thing. Take my seed beads under. So I'll show you the other way people do it. And slide. So just taking, I just put the seed beads on. Slide it all the way through first. There is no right way to do this. Um, I warp usually, I bead usually from the top of the loom down, and Trish usually does from the bottom of the loom up. Either way is fine. Some people even do it sideways. So you do what you feel most comfortable doing. So once again, I pulled the thread all the way through, pushing the seed beads up through each channel of the warp. And now I'm going to go through each seed bead over top of the warp. And that's what locks your beads in. So the beads are getting wo woven in. And then you just pull it through. And I'll do two more rows. Um, we want to try and keep these videos to about 30 minutes. So I'll do two more rows and review those steps. Um, and then feel free to rewatch this video on how to do that. And what you're going to do is you measure your wrist. So this is going to be a bracelet we're making. Measure your wrist. I personally wear size seven. So I would bead just very all the same thing all the way down for six inches. So I always take an, 
an inch out of what my wrist size is. Um, so whatever, so if you are a size eight wrist, you're gonna bead seven inches. If you're a size six, you're gonna bead five inches. So you can get different ways to measure your wrists. Um, you can get one of the tape measures like they have for sewing and wrap it around your wrist um, and match it up to see what size you are. You can get just a piece of paper and wrap it around your wrist and put it next to a ruler if you don't have one of the sewing tape measures. My camera, there we go, is going a little. <laughs> oh no, sideways. Oh, you like it sideways. Oh, fun. I see Trisha <laughs> posted that up. How else do other people, if, you, if you've loomed before on either the original or um, on the Wisdom Warrior, the small or the large, what way do you like to bead? I'm picking up six seed beads. And then lay, I like to do it this way. Um, we'll also talk, we'll probably do a project on the large Wisdom Warrior. So pretty much it's the same as this, but much bigger. And I like to do her, um, I, I beat on her sideways. But yeah, Trish, do you want to share some of those comments? <laughs> Pop them up yeah, on the I'm screen. Sorry, I was looking at the banners, I apologize. Um, it's okay. Okay. Of the different so ways people. Nicole says bottom to top. Patty, she's asking what color and size stringing and material. So um, on the stringing material, Patty, we are actually using 0.5 um, hemp. This is from Hemp Peak. And it's just a brown color. Um, I don't know that they put detailed names for you on these. No, they do not. But um, yeah, it's just a brown color. And you can see, well, you can't see because I'm showing you, but I'm not on the screen. <laughs> well, I have brown. Yes. Oh, do you want to yeah. show? Nope, that's OK. You got it there. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a brown color, and it's 0.5. And then uh, I'm and using a 0. 0.08 wildfire. Yes. And Patty said she likes sideways. Okay, you did that already. Um, Marie, I recently started in the middle because I have trouble with the tension oh. on the beginning and end. Being a bead or so wider than the top, still working on tension. Hmm. That will come with time, Marie. Just keep working yeah, on it. Yeah, it does. It sure does. Oh, you're welcome, Patty. No problem, honey. I'm all tangled up. That's why I mentioned if you're a new loomer, a jewel loomer, to make sure you don't only do a an arm span. Um, but yeah. if you're experienced, you can do two because you get all tangled up as I'm... <laughs> doing right now. So this is the last row I'm going to do now. Um, and as I mentioned, you're just going to keep on keeping till one inch away from your wrist size. Okay. And so you'll have, you'll have a couple weeks to work on that. Um, and you can do it either on the small wisdom warrior or on the original jewel loom. Do you have an original handy that you can, we keep mentioning that, but. Me? Um, no, unfortunately I do not have an original up here. Okay. I keep most, most of my looming supplies down by my chair downstairs because that's where I like to do it. There we go. Do you guys have any other questions about what we just showed you guys? Ooh, look at that pretty dish. Isn't that pretty? Somebody, <laughs> that. Somebody I love very much got me that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that would be. No, no. Great. Well, 
don't hesitate um, to contact Trish or I or Jules if you have any problems um, yeah. with, uh, with beating. And so next week we will be doing, we will be going over the seed bead patterns. So a whole new thing that That'll Jules is starting. Yes. Wait until you see it. It's so pretty. There's a oh, kit cool. or there's a kit or you can get, um, just the design. Um, and then, uh, we will, and then we will come back to this the last week of January. So every Thursday at seven, you can get either Trish or I, <laughs> one of us, or both of us, maybe. <laughs> or both of us. So for, for January, our plan is for both of us to be here for January. And then we will go on from there and see what's best. Um, yeah. So Joan has posted up the beads in a bag is what we're working with oh. this month, the earth kit. And, um, also the small wisdom warrior. So, uh, both of them can be found at jewelloom.com and Joan very graciously, uh, mess, um, mentioned that we both have affiliate links. Um, so those are all in the description. So that helps us out a lot. And uh, we're so happy to spend this time with you guys. Yeah, so it was super fun, guys. Always, always enjoy hanging out and teaching. It's just super fun. And, and Nicole, you're very welcome. We, we appreciate you all joining us today because without you, what would we be, right? Yeah, so fun. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Marie, Nicole, uh, everybody that... Oh, thanks, Carmen. This has been a blast. This yeah, has been a real so blast. Fun. And we can't wait to see you next Thursday. So yeah, we'll see you next week. So seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time every week. Um, so figure that out. I'm not good at the whole <laughs> no, time no, thing. No. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening, guys, and we will see you next week. See you guys. Bye. 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 -bye.